Uber, when I joined Uber, it was kind of like, uh, there was no machine learning it was at a time when Uber was just becoming a thing and it was, it was growing like crazy. And then we had, a, we have a lot of data. We know we should use AI because AI is going to help us use this data to get uh, the most value out of it. And so uh, I, I started this machine learning team there and, and a system we built there was called Michelangelo, which is kind of like a, a tool to help all of the programmers help them build machine learning and run it in uh, as part of the actual app. And how people were solving this stuff before was that they were literally writing, you know, some people are programmers on, on the line. They were literally writing like if statements, like conditional logic. We replaced all of that with machine learning models. We trained this model to be able to predict that in real time. So when everybody goes in and uh, like for every trip that is requested or every time you add a credit card in, in Uber, um, all, all of these predictions, it's not just one, it's like hundreds of predictions are made to determine if you're a fraudster or if you're a normal person. If you go to a company and you're just trying to like use machine learning to solve a real problem, 99% uh, of the time people use really, really simple stuff, stuff that you could go learn this weekend and then you can just go solve real problems for companies. You can get it into like an introduction to AI or machine learning with Python and you don't really need anyone to teach you this stuff. You can just like as immediately after this call, just Google it up and just get started on your, on your computer and just go and figure it out. Like try, try as hard as you can to make it happen. If you peel back inside the head, you'll find a lot of these things we talk about in neurons. If you look inside there, these things actually connect in a graph. So what if I were to write down the power of every neuron in your brain? Okay. So in other words, a list of numbers in a spreadsheet, hundred billion numbers between zero and one. That's called a tensor. What's fascinating is inside Bert's head, inside your head, everything is abstract as a tensor. And I mean everything. Like the music you listen to, that's activating and moving tensors that are flowing through graphs in your head all day long. So hopefully I showed you a sense of what it's like to go from theory from 1942 to you see it in a brain map in 2014, all the way to running in code on my laptop last night. I'll, I'll gladly take someone who's more curious and driven than someone very accomplished who may be not as curious and sort of, right? So there's a lot of things we look for and, and that's sort of the curiosity is, because if you're curious, when school ends, you're still driven, you're still working, you're, you're trying to solve something and the way you solve it as an engineer is you put something together to help solve it, right? It may not be the best way, but you learn so much by just probably doing and building. I'm Sejal and I've been building projects in machine learning for almost a year now. Over the next few months, I read research paper after research paper, replicated algorithm out of algorithm, and all for fun. We ended up building DeepDev, which is a no-code machine learning platform. And essentially, you can think of it as scratch from machine learning. I'm using natural language processing to emulate Dr. Chatbots. Because we can use AI for this, it's so much more scalable. You don't have to be satisfied with what's currently given to you, right? You can take initiative take control of your life and just learn it yourself. Just don't be limited to what the status quo is and just keep pushing that bar. Hey guys, my name is Isha, I'm 17. And before getting involved in AI three months ago, I was obsessed with blockchain. Now I'm teaching my computer how to see using computer vision algorithms like YOLO that self-driving cars use and teaching my computer how to paint like some of the world's best artists. I wrote my first Hello World Python program this summer. And now I'm going to be interning with one of the biggest banks in Canada, to develop chatbots. That got me super excited because I can build things that actually have an impact in the real world. And that's what tech's always been about. My name's Nadim. Uh, I'm one of the founders of the Knowledge Society. You know, and we used to live down in Silicon Valley. We left everything to figure out how we can train young people to solve really important problems. And so we started an organization that's called TKS or the Knowledge Society that is pretty much like Olympic level training. But instead of training, you know, Olympic level swimmers, we're training Olympic level CEOs, innovators, thought leaders, researchers. Just one thing I want to emphasize to everybody who's on this call right now, right? Mike said it, the kid said it, Scott is saying it. It's just get your hands dirty and build some stuff and you can do it now. Like it sounds like all this stuff is pie in the sky. You don't know Python. You don't even know how to code. Most of you are still 14, 15, 16 years old. This is where you start. And hopefully some people after this call feel inspired to actually learn Python, build some stuff because you can do it. Yo, before you go, be sure to go check out TKS. You're not just taught about crazy cool technologies. You're exposed to the mindsets, 
mental models, and skills that the most successful people use. By the way, I met my best friends at TKS, who I started companies with. Go check it out, you won't regret it.